Okay, we are going to go into Gallop Mon for three. Well, shit, I guess I lost. <laughs> uh, so he has plus two security checks, so I'm going to swing for three checks. He's on 14? On 14, yes. Giga Death. To the bottom of the deck. Oh my god. To the bottom of the deck, sir. I saw that going a lot differently. <sighs> All right, guys. Well, um, obviously, last week was pretty rough. Uh, we bricked like crazy, and despite the fact that the starter deck offers a lot of you know consistency in what the deck wants to do, offers us the ability to do all these Jogress plays, although we have our Davis, our memory boosts, everything, it is just not coming together. I am having too many games where I open up a handful of tamers and level fours and not much else. So we need to fish for a ton of consistency pieces out of what we have left of BT8. And then with the three packs we have uh, remaining here of BT7, hopefully we can get a hybrid so we have a chance at least to close out the games. That's basically the plan. Uh, we've already pulled our second fighter mode, so I'm not sure what else is really coming out of here. A couple more Vmons maybe to search the mega deaths would be nice. Uh, some armors would be really good. Raidramon would be nice because that at least allows me to be a bit more aggressive. Um, Davis Ken would be great to have as well. Um, a second Davis Ken would mean that I don't have to play three Davis or have to weirdly put the Stingmon in raising to get away with the Mega Death. So, I mean, let's see what we get. <clears throat> I'm not super optimistic to be honest. Um, I just I don't think I can beat Gallantmon in double death X. I've been really <laughs> sour about it for the last little while. Um, but you know, we gotta we gotta try, right? We gotta try. So Armadillomon, Agumon, okay. Well, there's a flame Dramon. That's an armor. That's a start. Um, I really wish we could have pulled the paladin mode out of here, though. That would have that would have solved a lot of our problems because we could bottom deck the, the Death X with all of the memory that Pete tends to give us, but you know, that's just not uh, that's not in the cards for us, unfortunately. Angemon, Aquilamon, Ginryumon, that guy. Not the armor we want. Cool. Cool, cool. Oh, come on. Just get out of there. Alright, let's see. I think there's a super back there. Uh, Top gun. Betsu, like all the, all this armor stuff, barely any armors. Okay, well we got our second Vmon, that's pretty cool. Willis and <laughs> okay, yeah, I, I I can be pretty happy about that. Black War Greymon is nice. Um, now I own four of these, uh, obviously just two that we've pulled in the course of the series, but uh, having access to him uh, definitely improves my mood a little bit. <laughs> definitely improves the mood a little bit. Um, it's just a, that is a nice super two pull. It's one less that I have to hunt down as I build out my big scary Black War Greymon X deck for, uh, for some, you know, IRL play. Yes, it's memory boost, that guy. Uh, Samadhi, hey, Davis K, oh! Ooh. Okay, ladies and gents, my mood has officially improved. <laughs> that's basically uh, that's basically what we needed. So second Davis Ken, great. We have the Ragermon. I uh, refuse to call this guy Lydramon. It's Ragermon, man. Uh, we got this. So with the Davis Ken, that is a much more potent option. It's going to make for some less awkward um, Joe Grissing plays. And then, of course, we have the Vmon uh, to dig a little bit more. So look at that. Okay. Um, last pack of BT. Eight. Let's see what it'll do for me. Uh, hopefully it'll treat me as nicely as those did. <laughs> uh, okay, Candle, Hook, Mame, Pulse, Innocence Blizzard, Hawkmon, Skull Knight, Myotismon, and Boncho Mamemon. Okay, well, not quite. <laughs> not quite, but we'll we'll take it. Um, and then let's just see if we can get a, a hybrid out of here. If we can get a blue hybrid out of these last three packs, um, I will consider that a success because you know, the the hybrid, it, it allows for a last minute Jogress play if we really have to. Uh, yeah, and there it is, Kendo Garurumon, great. <laughs> we have our blue hybrid, ladies and gents. Mame Tyramon, Kaiser H, Beetlemon, and oh, we got a promo. Oh, I was not expecting that. Promo Altart, it is not good though. 
<laughs> it is very much not good, but okay, cool. We have the Kendo Gururumon. Uh, important thing is it does go over the Tamer for two. Sadly, it is for three over a rookie though. So I'm gonna hope um, that'll, I guess Lobomon's not in this set, is it, right? Uh, I guess I gotta hope for Kumamon. Uh, if I can get Kumamon, he is a two cost and the source strip might be nice. We got a green hybrid now, so that's an option. Boko, Tortamon, Waymon could be fun. Pride Memory Boost, Burning Gray, Strawby, and a Sovereign. Nope, <laughs> that's not gonna, that's not gonna do it for us. Um, okay, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Can I, can I get, Come on. Hiya. Can I get something good here? Okay, well, there's another green hybrid, so we got options. Eismon, Turbulence, Loimon, wrong, wrong hybrids. Eosmon, Ancient Beetle. <laughs> Sora. What is up with these packs? Oh my goodness. I'm not playing green hybrid. Um, all right, well, we'll put that to the side too because we don't really need, uh, we're not playing any yellow stuff, but okay, so we got a couple hybrids. Um, I think this is the way to go, obviously, because Davis Ken is also part blue and we have our Davises. Um, okay, and then we can slot these guys in. This will improve the Vmon line a little bit. I maybe will drop back down to 12 rookies, depending on how I'm feeling about it. Uh, but obviously these are really nice um, because they can dodge Pete's deletion triggers. And obviously for this guy, I can get a ton of memory off of Davis and Ken. And if I promote out with Flame Dramon, um, I can swing over some stuff too. And obviously this is just really nice uh, as a pickup as well, because who doesn't like the big edgy boy Black War Greymon? So all around really cool stuff. Um, I will, I will go back to the deck edit and see if we can kind of smooth things out. Uh, this does have me feeling a lot better. I think this stuff is a lot more usable. Um, this will be great too. Searches the tamer as well, which is nice. Uh, we just have to find a way to make the deck as uh, efficient and streamlined as possible so that we're not getting caught out awkwardly. That has proven to be the big issue so far. Uh, so hopefully, hopefully this will be enough to smooth everything over uh, and really get us in the game. So yeah, guys, we'll, uh, we'll do that. We'll jump into the deck edit and we'll see what we can do this week. So I decided to take a bit of a gamble in deck building here and basically scrape together this weird armor rush slash Jogress deck. Basically, I got sick and tired of doing all this work to get into Imperial Dramon just for Gallantmon to pop everything in sight or you know, basically allow Pete to slam down a Death Exmon for basically nothing and wipe out my board anyway. So the general idea here is to stay lower to the ground and not lose too many resources when Gallantmon eventually comes out. The few armors in here will help in skirting the deletion triggers since they'll just armor purge and persist on the field, and that should hopefully force Pete to pass turn when going into his level 5s and his level 6s. Raidramon is arguably the most important piece here since it'll allow me to control any Guillaumons that Pete drops on the board since he is fond of the good old Rookie Rush, while also meeting both color requirements for Pyeldramon and Dino Beemon. Submarimon is my very low rent version of Magnamon, at least giving me a way to further control the board and prevent my Vmons from getting blown up for nothing. And hey, it is part blue, so it will do for Jogris in a pinch. Flame Dramon is just a decent beater, and I think it can get big enough to trade into a War Growlmon if Pete gets greedy, so that's something to keep in mind, but mostly it's just a cheap Evo on Vmon and hopefully a free chip into Pete's security. I also added my first hybrid, finally, in Kendo Gururumon, giving me access to that last swing for game, or the ability to clean up those extra copies of Davis that make Death X cheaper. And hey, you know, Going for two on top of a tamer means that I probably have a decent amount of memory left over to make a Jogress play. Finally, I've maxed out on my removal, again, even splashing in a copy of Giga Death. It is a bit sacky, yes, but I need to bounce Gallantmon and Death Xmon whenever they show up, and you know, with some luck, Pete will slam into one of these in security, which should hopefully give me enough time to get back into the game with how inconsistent Gallantmon can be at times. And I guess I should mention that I've dropped all of my dragon modes. 
choosing instead to just keep the two fighter modes in the event that I can ever actually get to a level 6, which, let's be honest, is not going to be happening very often. It's there more for the ability to bottom deck a war Growlmon if Pete leaves one out, but, you know, the double swing could come up as well. And hey, it is a chunky body that Pete can slam into, so there's always that. The deck honestly is not exactly what I'd hoped it would be at this point in the series, but you know, I am also very sick and tired of losing to Gallantmon, and outside of swapping to Ragnalord again, I feel like this is my best long shot. And on that note, let's jump into game one and see how things actually pan out for this janky monstrosity. You know, there's nothing like totally redoing your deck, bumping up the rookie count, maximizing your consistency, only for you to brick and brick hard for several turns in a row. I had to start this game in less than ideal circumstances even after getting my mulligan by dropping a Submarimon and then following that up with a hard drop of a Stingmon. And of course, Pete meanwhile had his perfect stack and I will flag here that yes, I did actually make a misplay and I played Stingmon for way less than I should have. But to be fair, I had not seen Kalumon in a really long time, so I just didn't remember what it cost. Now, I do try to do some chip damage here with the bodies that I had to hard cast because if I leave them on the board, they're just going to get gobbled up by War Growlmon X or by Gallonmon. And I was able to get rid of one, but unfortunately, I hit a memory boost on the second swing which did leave the Stingmon on board for Pete's to, well, cobble up. But the big Gallantmon stack did eventually get established, and after supercharging itself on all of those deletion triggers, it swung in and hit a Giga Death. Gallantmon suddenly went to the bottom, and, well, all of a sudden, we had a game again. At least I thought I did, until I had to hard drop an XVmon because the rookie continued to elude me. Pete, meanwhile, had rebuilt his stack, getting all the way up to a Gallantmon X this time around, and he did swing in for more than enough damage to wipe out all of my security. And then he hit a Mega Death on his last check. Now, thankfully, I was finally able to establish a stack in the back, so I got my new XVmon out and started swinging, hoping that I could basically close things out before Pete could grab the hybrid or put one of those giant blockers on board. I did eventually go for the Joe Grest play, bottom decking a Geomon that Pete had just dropped, just in case, and you know what? I actually managed to pull out the double swing for game. Now, heading into game two, I was still pretty shook, but since I actually managed to start a rookie this time around, I could take things a little bit easier. Pete started building in the back, but he was missing pieces, so he had to drop an EX3 Geomon, which is a little more expensive, and pass it back over to me. I got my jamming chip in, and since I didn't really have much else to do at the time, I hard evoed into the Dino Beemon, thinking that maybe I could bottom deck a War Growlmon if I could get up into fighter mode before he could properly set up. Pete went for the swing with the Guillaumont and actually nabbed a Davis, which I desperately needed, and of course it stopped him from getting the deletion trigger on the Guillaumont. He then set up the War Growlmon in the front and passed it back to me. Now I actually decided to swing over the Guillaumont because I felt like going for the mill now was worth the risk, and yeah, uh, that exchange worked out better for me than it did for him. Cool, so that gets deleted. We'll mill two. Mill. Oh, there goes my hybrid, and there goes my Lydramon. Okay. There goes my. There goes Gallopmon X and Gallopmon himself. Oh, okay. I think I came off worse than that. <sighs> and then seeing my opportunity with a blue and green source on the field, I just went for the Mega Death to remove the stack, which is going to become a recurring theme in this game. From there, I basically set myself up while Pete got to rebuilding being very mindful of the fact that I could have another Mega Death in hand, which I believe I did at the time. Now I did overextend a little bit, so obviously Pete dropped the Death Mon on me. I managed to stall with Ice Wall for a little bit, which gave me a little bit of time to finally rebuild, and then while I was a little hesitant about doing it because it could just come back down, I did bounce the Death Mon with the Mega Death just because I, I had to get it off the board. Pete came out of raising, he did manage to pop a body that I had on board, and then of course went for his big Gallantmon death stack. And he punched me for a lot of security damage. And then he checked the Mega Death. 
So with Gallantmon gone, Pete could only drop a Geomon and then follow that up with a Kalumon to threaten a very quick rebuild. But I answered both pretty quickly, bringing out Flamemon, clearing the body, and then bottom decking the Geomon with Pyeldramon's Jogress skill. You have to sometimes, just in case. Now that said, because I took the safe play, I did not have enough swings to close things out, so the game dragged on for a little bit longer. Pete actually decided to smack me with a hard cast Gaia Force, which did set me back a little bit because now I had no body, but obviously it gave me plenty of memory to work with as well. So I just established a stack in the back, I had an armor up in the front, so when Pete did come out swinging with War Growlmon, he basically got nothing off of it. And then I decided, hey, I've got the memory, I've got the cards in hand, so let me wrap things up with a little bit of flair. And I decided probably for the first and last time in this series to Jogress into Chimeramon and swing for game. All hail the mighty Megadeth. It was a less than clean 2 and 0, but let's be honest, that's one I'm going to take anyway. But in all seriousness, I do think ditching the heavy Imperial Dramon package was actually the right way to go. I can't really say that the deck works as an Armor Rush deck specifically, but as a very sloppy Pyodramon Turbo, it did well enough. Applying pressure with these small bodies and bouncing Pete's massive stacks was just enough to squeeze past Gallantmon, although to be honest I was down to one or no security most of the time as well, so if things went a little differently, uh, the game still probably could have gone Pete's way. That said, I, I still think this is the better line of play because it doesn't force me into overextending into the big Imperial Dramon Wombo combo and, you know, giving Pete a ton of bodies that he's just going to either pop and gain a bazillion memory from or obviously make Death Exmon cost nothing to hard cast. Now, again, caveats. Uh, I don't think this is a long-term, very viable strategy for taking out Gallantmon. I think now if Pete kind of adjusts and he starts doing a little bit more rookie rushing and just saving his stack for like the big final push, then he's not going to have a very hard time with this because he'll just clear my security bombs with his rookies before Gallantmon goes in for the big kill swing. Plus, uh, despite all of my best efforts, the deck is still a brickfest and I don't know if dropping the cash on another box of BT-8 is necessarily the way to go, just to snag a couple of more armors. But another caveat, I am just one win away from closing the series, and I do think I need to assemble a deck that can really definitively rival Gallantmon's ferocious power, so I have to do a little bit of digging around and see what that last product or box or whatever is gonna be. And hey, if Pete and I are truly heading into the final clash next time around, I think it's worth mentioning that I probably want to go out in style too. Don't you think? <laughs>